Folks, Thank the S&P 500 is up more than 40 percent since President Trump took office and outpacing the 30 percent average uh, for presidents in general for their first three years in office. This according to Bespoke Investment Group. So is the strong economy, the strong market at the wind of the president's back as we head into 2020? I want to ask market watchers Jeff Sika, Gary Kalbaum and Melissa Armo. Melissa, let me start with you. It feels like uh, the virtuous cycle may be more virtuous for President Trump than anyone else right now. Honestly, when you look at where we opened on the year, January 2nd, just through today, so what is today, December 26th, the market, the S&P has rallied 31% this year alone. And we really had a nice breakout on November 1st. And if you bought that breakout, on the, if you bought on November 1st, you, you just made money. We, we really have gone straight up since then. Yeah, but here's the thing, though, Gary. Success can be a double-edged sword. In other words, we are getting so accustomed to this, and we, I mean, you know, people who own the market, people who get pay raises, that it's got to continue through November, perhaps. Now, you can also be victim of your own success. The president's got to find a way to keep this going. President Trump wishes the election was tomorrow. That's the best way I can put it. When you have markets doing what they're doing, you have an economy, I believe it's accelerated over the last couple of months. Uh, that's when you want elections to happen. So uh, that we're now in countdown mode. And I will tell you flat out, if we have a good market and a good economy and he's up against Sanders or Warren, it'll be a landslide up against Biden. I think he wins handily because people care about their jobs. They care about their wealth and they care about the future of the economy. Economy and uh, right now it's in pretty darn good shape. You know, we were reminded of that a couple of months ago in Australia where the whole climate change thing, they say that's the worst place in the world where climate change eroding the Great Barrier Reef and everything. The president there was supposed to lose by a landslide one. People, Jeff, got into the voting booth and started to think about this stuff. Even though this was the headlines and they were getting hit with it over and over again, Australia hasn't had a recession in 29 years. They wanted to keep that going. Right, and then that, that's, that's what happens. You know, in some cases, it's ignorance and bl is bliss, and in some cases, it's just you hear it so much, you no longer take, it, take into account what's going on geopolitically when you're trying to make stock, de stock decisions. That's why investors have been so optimistic. They've been single-minded. The economy is improving. I've been very conservative, as you know, very cautious, and, and I paid a price for that. The reality is the market will keep going up as long as the headlines don't cross that line as being ominous. Although we, we saw last December where I thought there was a concerted effort, Melissa, to actually trigger a recession. And I think we came this close between headlines every single day, the Federal Reserve mistakes, and the market getting hammered almost every single day. I thought we almost talked ourselves into a recession. There were a few attempts this year. They fell flat because I think the key is going to be wages. If you look at blue collar wages, they are soaring right now, significantly higher than overall wages, the best that we've seen in a couple of decades. And you can tell because when you look at the companies that are doing well, for example, like Target, people, average people shop at Target. That stock has made brand new all time highs even after the earnings. It hit over 130 just in the last week. So when you look at even Amazon, Amazon today, unbelievable move from Amazon today, 68 points. It opened at 17.99 and ran up to 1868. If you bought that stock today, look at how much money you made, even if you had 100 shares of it. Huge move for Amazon today, which partly also lifted the market. And Apple looks like it's headed right to 300. I don't know if it happens by the end of 2019, but it's going there. I, I, am, I am bullish, okay? I am bullish. But I will tell you this. I think that there's more volatility to come, and I do not have 100% conviction. More volatility, than more volatility to come. Really? And let me tell wow. you why. I do not have 100% conviction that a trade deal happens in January, which is what they're saying is going to happen. I'm not on board that 100% that's right. going to take place. Well, gold was a little higher today, in part because there's still a little skepticism out there. I mean, we've heard from both sides, China and the United States. I feel like the phase one is a done deal, and phase two doesn't have to come until after the election. Well, number one, I'm bullish on gold. I think it's going to make a good move uh, regardless at this point in time. The great news is we've had a monster year. The bad news is we've had a monster year, and that's been, we've had like three years of returns this year. That's the worry going into next year. The best news, though, you got Jay Powell just printing away trillions. Markets have loved that for 11 years. He's going to do that at least until April in the election year. I doubt he stops. Uh, so we're going to have bumps along the road. I can tell you sentiment right now is wildly bullish, which means well, we could probably get a pullback in January. Uh, but I have to tell you, every day I'm finding new stuff. To, you mentioned Amazon came right out of range today on huge volume, very meaningful to the NASDAQ. And I'm finding other things on, on a daily basis. Amazon, so. a number one percentage gainer in the S&P 500, huge. which is interesting because
because it is a large market. Jeff Bezos be happy. Yes, he is. <laughs> all right, Melissa, Jeff, Gary, thank you all very much. Hey, is Bernie Sanders rising from the ashes, ready to make a charge in 2020? Some key Democrats think so. So do I. But we'll still debate it next. Also, President Trump, he's got some tips to help you get through your next family tension convention over the holidays. Snowflakes, get a pen and pad. We'll be right back.